All right, everyone, I can't actually see you. It's quite bright up here. So, indexing improvements. I hear um, that the beans have already been spilled by Yaniv earlier and also in follow-up presentations. My talk got rescheduled, so here we are at the end of the day talking about indexing improvements that are about to land and come to a decentralized network near you. I am a subgraph developer, and let me tell you something about data-heavy applications. They are hard, always, but especially on the blockchain. For the blockchain, it's just not a primary concern to make data access convenience, um, access at all, to be quite frank. So we have been in this struggle, me and my team, to solve this problem and we have been in this struggle, and it was painful. Let's call it the dark ages. We experienced this firsthand before subgraphs were a thing, and before, because by default, data access on the blockchain is slow, because you have to do multiple round trips if you want to fetch data. It, has, it is complex, because you need really intricate knowledge about the smart contracts that encode this information on the blockchain to be able to do something with it, to extract it and then make sense of it. But also, it is just really inaccessible. So let me emphasize on this last point, complexity. Top graphs actually not just, don't just index data, they also encode and enrich that data with the knowledge and the context from the very, super, uh, very smart contract developers who build these smart contracts from which we are extracting that information. That is a very important aspect that I think is underappreciated. So smart contract developers and subgraph developers make this data accessible by exposing it in a manner through the subgraphs that is more digestible in its format. Application developers, but also third-party consumers can now use that data without requiring them to study the intrinsic details of these smart contracts. So subgraphs empowered us. They gave us a second wind. Um, they made the data accessible to us. They made it fast, now exposing that data through a single, simple HTTP interface through which we could fetch the data in a single round trip from the server, from the decentralized network. Um, and they also made it simple, because now you have a simple, self-explanatory data format with which you can work. We realize that there's still work to do, and we have heard you. So, we want to support alternative use cases in the future. Alternative use cases could include, for instance, streaming real-time data. We want to um, enable and further foster reu reusability and composability of subgraphs. And we want to make the indexing more performant. This is a subgraph. This is your perfect case study of a traditional ETL pipeline. You extract data from the blockchain, E, you transform it, and then you load it into a database. This is currently all done in a single monolithic unit of computation, your subgraph, your mapping code in the subgraph. This is where that happens. And because it is um, a single unit of computation and because it is a, a constant read and write operation on the shared database which holds the state, it, is, it has to be done linearly. And linearity doesn't scale especially as the blockchain and the data that has to be indexed grows. So it becomes clear we have to parallelize this process. Furthermore, for alternative use cases, in order to cater for them, we have to enable other consumer interfaces. Other consumer interfaces for, for instance, real-time applications like notifications, alerts, maybe uh, something really that uh, could be um, like an on-chain relay centralized network of the graph, uh, reading data and indexing the data in a subgraph and then pushing it back onto the network. Currently, as I mentioned, these ETL pipelines um, work in an isolated manner. They are connected at the consumer level, so you can consume data from multiple of, of these subgraphs and then display that in your application and join them together at the end of the pipeline. 
but there's no way at the moment, and it has been attempted, uh, to connect the data at the indexing layer. So if you build a subref, let's say, um, to, to uh, show pricing information that's coming from a Uniswap TWAP, um, and you are aggregating that from, from the Uniswap uh, subgraph, there's no way currently in your own subgraph to read that data and make use of it within your indexing operation. So how can we get to a point where that becomes possible and we can share these subgraphs at a much lower level than we currently can? And the answer to this in my opinion, is to create this universe of interconnected and yeah, also uh, of, of uh, intragalactical and intergalactical connections between these smart contracts and the subgraphs that they uh, represent um, and enable communication with all of them in this universe that is the graph. And that is something that is, in my opinion, very true to the vision of the graph. The graph means one unified data source, not multiple individual subgraphs in isolation, but this entirety of all of these subgraphs combined. And within that lies the real power of the graph. So today um, we have already introduced it before, but we're introducing the substreams to um, a decentralized network near you uh, soon. Um, substreams are fully parallelizable, infinitely composable, and highly reusable and cacheable data units. Um, and uh, this is how you define such a substream. So a substream is essentially also, just like a subgraph, a YAML manifest with which you define the other substream modules from other developers, um, in-house or maybe from other protocols even, or from the subgraph DAO, um, and then define and um, yeah, declare how that subgraph is supposed to work with those. Um, you also, if you are reading this now, can see that there are protobuf files in there. So you declare the data, she the data schema for the data in motion within these substreams using protobuf. Furthermore, you also see that there's Rust referenced in there. So these substreams will be built using Rust. There's a um, command line interface through which you'll be able to package, build, and redistribute these substreams and share them with the community, just as you can also reuse sub substreams that have been developed by the community. Um, this modularity of the individual substreams and the modules within these substreams enables us to fully parallelize the indexing of individual data streams within such a module, and any other substream can inherit them, and it makes it possible for us going forward to also enable substreams like, for instance, a fully generic ERC20 token substream. Currently unthinkable. So, you define your protobuf schemas for the data that you're handling within a stream. And then in your substream code, in your module, you um, uh, expose that data and return that data for others to consume. These other modules can then also read that information using the same protobuf schemas and further refine it within their own subgraph or substream. And that leads me to the next question. How does this fit with the current model? So substreams are not a replacement for subgraphs. In fact, they are what, go, what is going to feed subgraphs. So in the future, when you are building a subgraph, you will consider that as the final indexing and aggregation layer around a series of substreams, combining the flow of the data from all of these different sources into a human digestible format that can then be consumed by your end user application. So as you can see here, um, this gigantic network that I see um, will manifest itself um, with generics, uh, generic substreams maintained by the subgraph DAO or very specific sub substreams maintained by individual protocol development teams 
um, will be exposed to you and you can reuse all of that conveniently. So tomorrow there's a session by Alex from Streaming Fest. It's in the Connects breakout room um, at 10.30, at 3.30 in the afternoon. And there you'll learn exactly how these subgraphs are supposed to work, how you can uh, build a substream, and uh, how you can use it in your application. Thank you.